Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well, guys, I'm going to be working more on this uh, steam pipe repair that we're doing for the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. And if you're not familiar with this project, didn't see the first video, uh, this is a steam pipe out of a steam locomotive. It's a 1917 Vulcan Ironworks 040 uh, narrow gauge locomotive that we run out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture in Tifton, Georgia. Uh, it's an operational steam engine uh, that we use at the museum for various functions. And we've got a problem with one of the steam pipes up in the, in the front end of the locomotive. Uh, we had this out last year doing some maintenance work on the locomotive. And in the process of putting this back in, they broke uh, one of the ears off of this flange. And this flange has been repaired in the past. It's got some issues. Uh, they took it to a local shop to have some work done to it. Uh, they really just made things worse in, in a lot of different ways. You can go back and watch the previous video to get the update on all that. But I wanted to kind of bring you up to speed of where we are on the project and uh, how we're planning on proceeding forward because I have changed my plan of attack a little bit on this. And a lot of that's because of the comments and a lot of the emails and, uh, and some different things that I got from you guys out there. And got some really great ideas, some really great comments. Uh, you guys brought up some things I really hadn't thought completely through, and I told you at that time, you know, that it was still kind of a plan in motion, but it's really awesome on this YouTube venue that you can kind of get input from a lot of different people and, uh, you know, kind of evaluate how you want to move forward. So originally, we were just going to basically try to reattach the ears, uh, and actually, after I got in here and started looking at this, the ears on both sides, like I said, they've been broken previously. They've been replaced previously, and the, the pieces that were put back on weren't even cast iron, they were steel. Uh, and, you know, welding cast iron, uh, I prefer to braze it, is always difficult. Uh, but when you braze steel on the cast iron or weld steel on the cast iron, it even adds a whole nother level of complications. It can be done, don't get me wrong, uh, but it, it adds complications. So here's the game plan, just cut to the chase. We're going to just lop the whole flange off the end of this. I'm going to take a bandsaw. We're going to cut this whole thing off. I'm going to fabricate a new flange. I've got a drawing to replace, basically using the same design as the original. We're going to fabricate our machine, actually, a totally new flange. And we're going to then reposition the whole new flange on here. Uh, and I'm doing this for multiple reasons. Uh, again, you know, instead of just replacing the flange, number, or replacing the ears. Number one, I, I really feel like that if we put a whole flange on here, it's gonna be a much stronger repair. I'm not gonna have any in breaks in these ears uh, that I'm gonna have to be dealing with. Obviously, you know, anytime you've got a break, no matter how good your weld or braze is, I don't think it's ever gonna be as strong as it was, particularly in a material like cast iron, um, than it was originally. This way we've got a solid new flange all the way around, this pristine, there's no uh, breaks or anything in there uh, and so on. So I think number one, that's gonna be good. Number two, from a machining standpoint, you know, we were gonna have to come in here, weld the ears on, we were actually gonna braise up this bottom that had been ground down to get the uh, geometry right and the shape right and to get a good seat that we could put on here. And you know, getting the, the brazing and welding part done was gonna be the easy part. The hard part was gonna be doing the machining. It was gonna take a really complicated setup. This, this steam pipe is not something that's easy to hold on a machine. It would require building some fixtures to hold it. Uh, and it's just a lot of work to be able to do that. Going with this route, I can actually do all of my machining on the flange and not have to worry about all this complicated work holding up here. Uh, it's just gonna make life much easier. Um, another advantage, I think, to doing this is that, you know, we're still going to braze the cast iron together. Um, and before, with the, replacing the ears, we we're going to have a very small amount of actual brazed area that the repair was going to be done. Brazing the whole pipe to the new flange, I've got a lot of area around here that, for that braze to actually hold it together. And again, I think that the actual braze job is going to be much stronger than we could ever get out of just uh, the pieces here. And uh, the other, one of the other things I think is going to be uh, uh, good is that we're going to be getting the steel out of the equation. There's steel in here on these ears. 
Uh, I would rather this entire part be cast iron through and through uh, and not have any steel. In fact, some of the recommendations that I got from you guys was just make a flange out of steel. Well, we're making it out of cast iron. I got a piece, a disc of cast iron here. This is actually a Durbar, uh, which is kind of an extruded cast iron product, but it is cast. It's, it's the same material, or at least a very similar material to the original cast that we're doing. The reason I don't want to use steel is, number one, again, we've already mentioned brazing steel to cast iron. While it can be done, uh, it's, it's difficult. But also, you got to remember, this is going into the front end of a steam locomotive. It's going to get really hot in there. You're going to have big swings in temperature change from, you know, when the locomotive's idle, we fire it up, put it into operation. You've got steam going through this pipe. And you've got to think about thermal expansion and things that are going on. And steel and cast iron, they move differently when they're under heat. Uh, the steel is going to move at a different rate. It's going to expand and contract at a different rate than the cast iron. By putting a cast iron flange back on here, and some would argue, yeah, the steel would be stronger, you'd be less likely to break the, the ears off again. I'm not so worried about that. I think we got plenty of meat in here for the cast iron to hold. Uh, but what's more important is that when we do that expansion and, and contracting, uh, that's, that becomes a weak point in your braze job and in your weld job uh, where that will eventually can, can cause those, those, uh, those braze joints to fail. And by putting the, the, the same material in here on both pieces, in theory anyway, they're going to move at the same rate or at least at very close rates. I'm sure the composition of this cast iron is not exactly the same as this, but it's a heck of a lot closer than the cast iron to steel. So anyway, that's the game plan. Uh, I've got a drawing here of the flange and that we're going to be working off of. And um, let me zoom in here and show you that and show you the piece that we're going to be working on. And let's get started making this project. So first off, here's the drawing of the flange uh, that we're going to be working off of. This is basically just a copy of the original, and uh, we were able to have some drawings that we were able to base this off of original drawings as well, plus copying what was already on uh, the flange. And this is more or less to scale, and you can kind of see there. Uh, it's eight and a half inches across from one end to the other. I was able to find uh, at McMaster Car this piece of Durabar, we were able to order this. This is nine inches in diameter, it's an inch and a half thick. I really needed about an inch and a quarter of material, but they only sold this in one inch thicknesses, an inch and a half, so we went with the inch and a half. I'd rather have a little bit extra material, obviously, than not enough. So um, um, we're gonna basically cut this out. My game plan here is, is we're gonna go put this in the lathe, we're gonna face off one side, get a nice square. I'm gonna find the center, We'll scribe a center line, parting line, whatever you want to call it through here. We're not actually going to part on there, but basically become this line. And I'm going to lay this out. I blew it up with some die chem. We'll lay it out. Uh, we'll find the center for these holes. I'll probably go ahead and center punch them on the lathe. I'm going to lay out the whole design. And then before I take it out of the chuck, we're going to go ahead and drill and bore the center hole uh, to the proper diameter. We'll then take it out of the chuck. Um, Probably just going to go out and use a metal cutting bandsaw to rough out the shape of this thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and get our holes drilled in here. Uh, and once that's done, we're going to flip the part over. I'm going to come back in. We'll grab this with the chuck on the lathe again, but on the inside of this bore, and I will machine the other side of the part. We'll begin face off the entire piece, and I've actually have to build a uh, little raised uh, flange that comes up about a eighth of an inch on the other side. We'll machine all that in on the lathe in the second operation. So that's the game plan. Let's go get it set up in the lathe and get to work uh, actually cutting some metal. I've got this disc set up here in the three jaw chuck. I had to turn my uh, jaws around so that we could grip it from the outside because of the size here, but no problem with this delay is just fine. And we got a cutter in here. Again, we're gonna face across and uh, get a nice flat surface uh, to start working on here. So let's just get in here and touch off and do it.
I'm actually pretty happy with that. That's good. My next step here is I want to just come in here and, and put a little dimple in the middle for a center. And this is going to help me with laying out the part. And I'm just wanting a little dot there is all I'm wanting right now. So that's good. I've come in here and I've used some die chem just to put some layout fluid on here because I want to actually lay this whole part out right now. And we're going to do this uh, where we can just kind of have some guidelines to work off of. And again, I got my drawing. And the first thing I want to do is I want to draw this hole that we're going to bore. That is a two and a half inch diameter. So we're going to do inch and um, quarter radius. And to do this, I'm just going to show you the first time. Um, I'm going to start at one here, but you can kind of feel it click in there. So that's inch and a quarter. And we're just going to come in here. I'm going to go in that center hole that we did earlier. And I'm just going to scribe it in there where I can see what we're doing. Okay. The next diameter I'm going to do is uh, this outside. And really all I need is just these little arcs on the ends. But that's a four inch diameter right here, uh, four inches across. So two inches on your radius. Let me adjust my, my um, dividers. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and scribe this as a circle, even though we're not going to cut it out as a circle. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to put a center line through here. So I'm going to go grab a uh, straight edge and a center finder and we'll get that. So my, my combination square set has this little uh, center finding tool in here. And you know, you got to remember that this is a uh, cast iron. It's not perfectly round on the outside, but it's going to kind of get me in here close. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that I bicep the the center hole here, yeah, but I'm just going to scribe a line across. Okay. Next thing I want to do is uh, lay out for the two holes here. Okay. So this is three and a quarter inches. This is a radius that I'm going to just swing over and intercept that line and that'll tell me where I need to be. So again, let me set my dividers here, three and a quarter. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to swing that one. Okay. That tells me the center of those. And I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put a center punch mark in there because I need to swing some more radiuses off of that. And I'll also tell me uh, later on where I need to, to drill those holes. So let me grab a center punch. All right, so I'm going to come in here with my center punch, get right on that point. There's one. And two. All right. So now I want to lay out my holes. That's a one inch diameter. So let me adjust my dividers down to a half inch, which will be the radius of that. All right. Now I want to put these outside radiuses on here. And um, my drawing here is showing a one inch radius. I know that uh, this is saying eight and a half inches. I've got a piece of nine inch stock and you know, I I've just made it a, a executive decision that I'm gonna stretch these out to, instead of an inch, an inch and a quarter, they'll change this outside length to nine inches instead of eight and a half. Uh, I've got room in the locomotive to do it, but that's gonna give me some extra meet around uh, these holes where we had some breaks before. So, you know, it's, it's just going to make the part a little bit stronger. So um, I'm just making an executive decision here to do that. So I'm just going to kind of put a half radius, half arc on that side. Same thing on this side. And our part is evidently just a little over nine inches, which is fine. And then we'll just kind of 
do a tangent to these two arcs here. like such. Whoops, got off a little bit, but that's all right. You know what? I went way off because I went on the wrong one. Let me get some document. I'm gonna cover that up and fix my mistake. Give me just a sec. I swear I could have heard everybody screaming through the video. No, you're making a mistake. But hey, no problem. We caught it. We're going to fix it. So let me uh, get back over here. Put that one in there. We're just going to roll this over now. And we'll do the other side. All right, so hopefully you can see the, the flange that we're gonna cut out of there. I got my layout marks, and uh, like I said, we are gonna go ahead now. We're gonna drill and bore the center hole while we got it in here. Then we're gonna take this off, and I'll just bandsaw it out to that, that shape, and we'll come back and finish it in a, another step. So let me get some drill bits, and we'll start boring a hole out. I'm gonna start with just a 3 8 inch hole here. We've already got that center in there from previously. But this will just give me a pilot hole to start with. All right, that's got us through the first pass. Let's go up a size. Next here, we're going up to 7 8 of an inch. Let me slow that down just a little bit. Tell you what, that drill bit's just not cutting very good. I'm gonna sharpen it real quick. Be right back. All right, I grabbed a different bit and I sharpened it. So uh, much, much better. We're through. Next, we're going up the inch and three eighths. Let's see if that speed's going to be all right. to inch and 15 sixteenths. Let's see if we can get that out of there. We're just gonna bore the last little bit of this out. I got a boring bar set up here in my mitt lathe and uh, we'll just come in here and nibble it out. This should be the last pass here on the bore. We're shooting for two and a half inches on the inside diameter. And it uh, doesn't have to be exact. I mean, the inside pipe on that casting is just a rough casting. So it's not a regular, it's probably a regular shape, a regular size, what have you. Uh, but according to the print, two and a half inches is what we need. So that's what we're shooting for. So when we get this one done, I think we'll be done with the lathe work for now.
I've got half of the part sawed out and uh, we are starting on the second half right now. This process is painfully slow, but uh, it's got to be done, so let's get her done. guys we got the rough shape all uh, roughed out here and now I got to do this blend it all in uh, I'll probably do that on a grinder or belt sander or something I'll figure that out but uh, band sawing's done uh, that took a while long boring tedious job but hey it's, sometimes it's the best tool to get things done well now that we got this thing band sawed out uh, I'm going to kind of smooth everything up blend all these uh, rough sawn edges together, get my everything down to size and to do that we're going to just come over here to the big Baldor grinder. Got a big five horsepower grinder back here with I don't know it's like 14 inch wheels or something like that on it and uh, it's got a nice wide face wide enough to do this inch and a half it's about a two inch wide wheel. So let's get in here and get this done. We got our part all ground up on the edges now. It's not 100%, I'll probably go back and touch up on it some more when we get through uh, doing the rest of the machine work, but it's good enough for right now. And next thing I wanna do is drill the, the two uh, one inch holes in there. And to do that, we're gonna use the Carlton radial drill. Uh, I've got this set up in a vise on my tombstone bench down here. And we'll just come in here and steer this big old puppy right here where she needs to go. I think that's where we want it at, so let's uh, lock her down. We're drilling a 3 8 hole to start with. The chart here recommends a speed of 1019, so let's see what we got close to that. Tell you what, we'll go to 990, which is right there. That looks pretty good. Let's uh, drill it on out here. I'm just gonna let it, we're just going to let it automatically feed down. That joker is hogging some metal. where I can get that bit out. All right, for a one inch bit, uh, hole in cast iron, it says 382. So I'm gonna come back over here. There's, we got 350 right here. There we go. So we got a speed here of 350 revolutions per minute. I've got my feed set on six thousandths per revolution. And we'll let her drill it on out. done we'll do the same to the other side I've turned the jaws on my chuck back around now to their normal mode and what we're going to do is we're going to actually grip 
this on this step right here on the inside of that hole that we bored earlier. So basically we'll slide it up on here like such and I'm going to take my jaws and we'll actually expand the chuck out until we grip that like such. That should be now square with the work that we did before and we can come in here and start working on this side. Now it's going to be an, un or an interrupted cut, uh, but I, we can work around that. My goal here is um, I want the total thickness of this part to be about an inch and a quarter, uh, and that's at the bottom of, there's going to be a little ring around here, and then it'll be down about an eighth of an inch, and then the rest of it uh, will just be the thickness for the boss here. So first thing we're going to do is just get this thing cut down to size. I got about a quarter of an inch to come off of it again because that's just what size nominal stock we started with. And then we'll machine that uh, ring around here uh, like we just talked about. So let's fire up the lathe and get going. Because this is an interrupted cut, I'm not going to try to take too much off. Really and truly, I probably ought to be using high speed steel here rather than carbide. Uh, I'm, and I may switch out if we, if we start breaking cutters. So. Uh, Slide. Check our finish here. Yeah, I'm real happy with that. So um, anyway, I'm going to continue on. I'm not going to bore you with this. We just got a bunch of material to hog off. Quick update is where we are. I've got this now machined down to about an inch and a quarter thick. Um, and, and I started cutting this and, and I said, man, this is taking forever. Uh, to get it down, I was just kind of eyeballing it and uh, took a measurement and I was actually greater than an inch and a half after I've been machining for a while. We ordered inch and a half thick material. It was actually a little over an inch and three quarters, so it took a little bit longer to get that down than what I really thought. I actually hadn't measured it until just then. Next thing I want to do is we're going to continue facing it, but I'm going to stop short and leave a circle basically four inches in diameter. That's where our steam pipe ring is going to fit up on there and we need some clearance back here on either side just to, that's the way the original was and we're going to make that little boss stick out about two hundred thousandths of an inch uh, and again there's no critical measurements on on any of that we're just trying to get it down there where it needs to be so get back in here I actually change cutters i'm going to put a little bit of a angle on that uh, boss that sticks up so it's not straight in and go ahead and get this done we're getting close though is done. Well, guys, I got the flange all done here. Uh, looks good. Looks like a good match up here. Let me zoom you in here and kind of show you what we got. So we basically just roughed out the shape on the bandsaw and uh, granted, I, I knew it when I did it. On the first cut, I, I kind of got into the meat up here just a little bit. It's not going to matter. It aggravates me a little bit. The rest of them came out really nice. Uh, it's just kind of this one little area up here. But again, it's not going to matter in the grand scheme of things. I'm just not happy with uh, the way it turned out. But ground out the edges. Uh, I still got a few little marks in here. You know, we may work on those. I may just let them go. It really doesn't matter. But what's important is, is that, you know, this thing's going to be a nice match. 
to come up here. Um, holes line up, everything looks good there. And next, the plan is, is we're just going to lop the old one off and put the new one on. Uh, I may have to do some more machining to this to get it to really uh, be a perfect fit, but we won't know that until we get this thing lopped off and uh, kind of do some test fitting in the locomotive. But all in all, the, the new flange, I'm very happy with. Uh, it's going to work out really just great. And uh, anyway, there we go, making a new flange. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, that's going to be a wrap on this episode. One steam pipe flange uh, knocked down. Uh, we've still got more work to do to this. That's going to be in upcoming videos. Uh, coming down the road, uh, we're going to be talking, we're, we're actually going to have to do the last part here, get the old part cut off and the new part put on. Uh, also going to be doing a little bit of an update on the measurement project and getting all that done. Uh, got some neat things going on there as well. And uh, that's going to be coming up in future videos. So stay tuned, keep watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you're uh, tuning in for the first time or haven't already hit that subscribe button, please do. And uh, you'll get updates uh, on new content coming on my channel. Leave me a thumbs up if you like it. Comments, emails, all those good things. Uh, uh, love, to, love to hear from you guys. So with that, we'll be signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you next round.